On day one, I spawned into the Badlands as a slippery, fiery fire eel. I'm one spicy unagi, but I wouldn't be very filling. I'm only a baby eel, but I'm sure I could still pack a fiery punch. I breathed a jet of fire, one of my awesome fire eel starter powers. I was feeling super confident about what the next 100 days could hold. But my confidence didn't last for long, because a huge dread beast came running across the Badlands towards me. There was no way he was up to anything good. Still, I tried my best to be polite. Hey there, dread beast. I'm Zozo. It's nice to meet you. What a lovely day we're having, right? Yes, a lovely day. Even lovelier now that I've found you. A delicious fire eel. Wait, what? What do you mean delicious? I am the all-devouring dread beast, Zozo. All that matters to me is finding and eating tasty things, because I'm always hungry. Oh no. And don't even think about slithering away, little eel. I love fast food. But I slithered away anyway, going as fast as I could. There was no way I was going to be devoured by a dread beast on my very first day in the overworld. But I don't think that nasty dread beast is gonna quit either. I need to get strong enough to beat that monster, or I worry I'm gonna spend a hundred days preparing to become its lunch. On day two, I kept slithering until I finally found a place in the Badlands to stop and catch my breath. It's not exactly the most hospitable place to spawn. Then again, given that I'm a fire eel, it's probably better than spawning somewhere cold. And hey, at least I have 10 hearts. I realized that all that talk about eating me had, weirdly, made me kind of hungry. These will make for a perfect snack. I busted down the tree and started eating those delicious crunchy apples, feeling my hunger bar replenish. That's when I felt something that a fire eel should never want to feel, the cold. I turned and saw that it was because a ghost was floating right behind me. Give in, Zozo. To be devoured by the mighty dread beast is your destiny. What? You don't even have anything to do with that. You're just some random ghost. Why would you want the dread beast to eat me? <laughs> You're so foolish, Zozo. I have everything to do with it. I was a villager once, and then the dread beast ate me. I came back as a ghost, forever enslaved to his will. That's terrifying. I'm sorry, Mr. Ghost, but there's no way I'm letting that happen to me. I turned and ran for my life in the opposite direction. That spooky ghost and his master slash eater had already freaked me out enough for one day. When I came to a stop, alone in the middle of the Badlands, I was exhausted and honestly felt like crying. That's when I was approached by a surprisingly friendly Gorgon. Hey little buddy, you look sad. I'm Grace, Grace the Gorgon. Why don't you come with me? I can help you out. That, that sounds nice. Thank you. I've had a really hard day. Oh, don't I know it. Come with me. I'll take you to a friend of mine's place. You'll be safe there. On day three, Grace the Gorgon and I traveled through the Badlands until we found a small shack with a troll waiting outside. But rather than posting mean comments on the internet, he seemed happy to see us. Grace the Gorgon hung back while I approached to get acquainted with the cheerful troll. The name's Terry. Terry the Troll. You look like you've seen a ghost, fella. I have seen a ghost, actually. And it was the ghost of one of the past victims of a giant monster that wants to eat me. Whoa, that's heavy, man. A monster wants to eat you. That sounds like something the Dread Beast would do. Yes, the Dread Beast. That's the one. Is there anything I could do to stop that awful monster from eating me? Isn't it obvious? You're gonna need to slay it. Get it before it gets you. You get me? Slay the Dread Beast? That doesn't sound like it's gonna be easy. Sure, it won't be easy, but is anything worth doing ever easy? Get out there, make a base, get some allies who'll work with you. It'll be tough, and it'll take time, but the way I see it, little fire eel, it's the only way you're gonna get out of this. Well, an eel's gotta do what an eel's gotta do. Thanks for the advice, Terry. I'm gonna try my best to get strong enough and make enough allies to defeat the Dread Beast. From day four to day five, Grace the Gorgon and I went deeper into the Badlands until we found an area that looked like it'd be perfect for building a base. But you're gonna need some tools first, Zozo. Maybe start out by gathering some wood. Good idea, Grace. I used what little baby eel strength I had to break down a tree and collect the wood for building a wooden pickaxe. It's mining time. And then I mined into the ground, collecting enough stone to build myself a stone pickaxe and a stone sword. But I didn't stop there. I continued gathering stone until I had enough to build myself a basic base with two rooms. 
One for me, and one for Grace the Gorgon. These rooms both look awesome, Zozo! Thank you! It wasn't easy to build them, but I'm glad I did. Out of curiosity, Grace, why did you choose to stay with me? Because I hate bullies, and I wasn't going to leave you out there, vulnerable to the Dread Beast. We'll stick together and win this thing! Oh, you're the best, Grace! And that moment was so heartwarming, my hearts grew twice as big. Literally, I was bigger, stronger, had 20 hearts, and I gained an awesome new ability! Shooting flaming wither skulls! Ah, yeah, that's more like it! From day 6 to day 8, I ventured out to a new location, the Basalt Barrera. It's nice to take a load off and see new places. It takes my mind off the fact that a terrifying monster wants to eat me alive. Oh no, now I'm thinking about it again! But I didn't have any more time to stand around feeling anxious, because the same ghost that was hassling me earlier emerged out of the trees! Zozo, I found you! I really wish you'd unfind me! You still have your sense of humor! Good, you'll need that when you're a ghost! The days are dark, and the nights are long! It will never end! Actually, it's gonna end for you right now! I was sick of being chased away by monsters, so I unleashed my fire breath onto the ghost, weakening him and making him physical, before finishing him off with my stone sword! Nobody's eating me! I won't allow it! My battle with the ghost must have caught the attention of a cyclops who was wandering through the basalt barrera. He immediately approached me with an offer. A name's Sid, Sid the Cyclops. I may not have great depth perception, but I can see a real strength in ya. Think you can do a job for me? I got a local freaky customer he needs a tendon to. Sure, I'll give it the old fire you'll try. From day 9 to day 10, I went out to a remote part of the Basalt Barrera with Sid the Cyclops following close behind. Who exactly do you want me to fight here, Sid? Believe me, when you see him, you'll know. And Sid was right. The second I saw him, I did know. It was a huge, frightening dread night. I could see why Sid didn't want to take him on himself. Well, here goes nothing. I ran in and faced the dread knight alone. Doth thou wish to challenge me, knave? Oh yeah, consider yourself challenged. Tis a battle then. I fought the dread knight, but none of my attacks seemed to do any damage. The fight seemed hopeless, and in the end, all I could do was turn and run. I met back up with Sid the Cyclops, not far from the side of the battle. I'm not strong enough to take on this dread knight yet, Sid. But until I am, how about you come and hang out at my base? Just sounds like a guess. Let's go. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to my base with Sid the Cyclops. I got to work on building him a new room right alongside the rooms I'd built for myself and Grace. By the time I was done, Sid looked delighted. I've always wanted a second home. This is a big deal for me. I feel like a celebrity or something. I'm glad you like it, Sid. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Well, it's not quite as humble now. Go take a look at some upgrades I created while you were building my bedroom. I took a look at the upgrades, and I was extremely impressed. He'd built a furnace, which would allow me to smelt ores into ingots for building weapons and armor. And he'd also built a storage room, where I could store more weapons and resources. Speaking of resources, I'm hungry. I should probably find a way to keep my food supply sustainable. To that end, I started herding some chickens from the surrounding badlands and created a small farm with some coops to keep them for eggs and chicken. And now, it's time to put that furnace to good use. I searched until I found a deep cave, and inside, it didn't take me long to find a nice vein of iron ore. I mined it with my stone pickaxe until I had enough to take back. I returned to my base and smelted the ore into iron ingots. With the help of a few leftover sticks, I made myself an iron sword and an iron pickaxe. This will give me something to put in the storage room, too! From day 13 to day 15, I started feeling antsy, thinking about the fact that the Dread Beast was out there, biding its time, waiting for the right moment to strike. I realized that I needed to get stronger, so I returned to Grace the Gorgon for some advice on what I should do next. One of the biggest sources of the Dread Beast's power is the Legion of Ghosts created from his former meals. The more of them you can free from their bounds on the overworld, the weaker he'll be. I actually think there's another one near here at the Basalt Barrera. Because Grace always seemed to be right, I ventured out to the Basalt Barrera, and exactly as she'd predicted, there was one of the Dread Beast ghostly servants waiting for me. Looks like I have my work cut out for me here. Through a mix of my fire attacks and the work of my strong new iron sword, I was able to defeat the ghost. It even dropped a potion of strength on the ground, which I picked up and drank. Wait, I can feel something happening. 
Suddenly, I started to grow, getting bigger and feeling my number of hearts grow to 30. I also experienced additional damage on every single one of my attacks. Grace was right, I'm much stronger already. This really was the trip out here. From day 16 to day 19, I went out to the bayou as a test of my courage. It was dangerous to wander around there with so much water everywhere. Still, what's life without a little risk here and there? I can't be a truly powerful fire eel if I'm not brave. But this journey was more valuable than just building up my confidence. While I was slithering along, I discovered a strange old book of fairy tales and decided to give it a read. Man's hunger for wealth and power once unlocked darker and deeper hungers. Greedy miners who wanted diamonds and gold dug deeper than they should and uncovered the monstrous dread beast, a creature with a hunger to devour the whole world. Wow, so that's where the dread beast came from. I wonder what I can do with this information. But I didn't have time to ponder on this for too long because I looked up and saw another eerie ghost floating toward me out of the darkness of the bayou. You can't escape, Zozo. I thought I could escape. <laughs> I was so silly. He ate me like he ate all the others. He'll eat you too, Zozo. He'll eat you too. I vaporized the ghost with a wither skull and then ran out of there. I didn't feel like spending any more time in the bayou that day. From day 20 to day 22, I went back into the mining cave to collect a little more iron ore before returning to my base and smelting it into iron ingots. I've got some cool weapons and tools. Now it's time to get myself some awesome armor. I made an iron chest plate, which admittedly, you couldn't actually see on my fire eel body, but would provide me some valuable defensive abilities anyway. I'm stronger than I've ever been, but now it's time to use that strength for good. There's an old score I have to settle. I returned again to the Basal Pereira with one thing on my mind, finally defeating the Dread Knight. When I found him again, I pulled out my sword and squared up to him. Doth thou return to fight me, you sad little fire ill? You cannot destroy that which has already been destroyed. What does that even mean? Once upon a time, I was a knight, a brave and powerful knight. I battled many a monster and believed that I could also slay the dread beast. But I was wrong, terribly, terribly wrong. The dread beast devoured me, and now my soul is bound to his. I'm a shade of my former self. And let me free you from this terrible state, dread knight. I fired a wither skull at the dread knight, then ran in to battle him directly. With my new skills and my iron sword, I was able to hold my own against the dread knight and eventually destroy him. Rest well, tragic knight. I'll avenge you and all the others. Oh, will you now? I turned with horror to see the dread beast itself standing close behind me. Even with my new strength, he still looked just as frightening. Tasty, tasty little eel. It's almost time, Zozo. I'm getting so hungry I can barely control myself. I didn't want to stick around and see if the dread beast could keep a leash on his appetite. Instead, I just turned and ran away as quickly as I could. From day 23 to day 26, I returned to my base to tell Sid the Cyclops that I had managed to defeat the Dread Knight and free him from his torment in the process. Zozo, how did the go-go, my guy? The Dread Knight won't be bothering you anymore. I don't feel much like celebrating about it, though. He was just as much a victim of the Dread Beast as me. He's really, really evil. Evil is as evil does, I guess. What can we do about it? We can help each other. We can fight back. I like where your head's at, kid. But where do we start? I should probably upgrade my gear. If I want to do that, I'd better get mining. I headed down into the mining cave to see what I could find. I managed to gather some iron ingots, and I took them back to my base and smelted them, making an iron helmet. I feel tougher already. Then Grace the Gorgon approached me. I heard what you did for the Dread Knight. That was an amazing start. As a thank you for your hard work, I've added an improvement to the base that I believe you'll approve of. It's a security bunker, a safe place to retreat to in the event of an ambush by the Dread Beast or one of his ghostly army. Awesome, thank you! From day 27 to day 31, I went back out to the bayou, equipped with my new helmet and a renewed sense of purpose. I was a little worried I would run into another ghost, but instead, a big friendly panda came ambling up to me. I heard you're the guy who got rid of that ghost who was terrorizing us out in these parts. Thank you kindly for that. Of course! Are there any more ghosts out here? 
None that I've seen, but if you're offering help, I sure could use a place to stay. See, that nasty ghost critter tore my house right up. Any chance you've got a spare room? And that room is panda-sized? Sure. Well, I don't have a room for you yet, but I can build one. Let's go back to my base and we'll get you settled in. Thanks. By the way, my name's Patrick. I'm Zozo. You sure are impressive for an eel, Zozo. Well, that's kind of reductive, but thanks anyway. Come on. Patrick the Panda followed me back to my base, and I got to work on building him a room where he could stay. When I was finished, Grace the Gorian came to talk to me. Zozo, Terry the Troll needs help. There's a ghost attacking his home, but I can't fight it alone. Will you come with me and help? Of course, poor Terry. Let's head on over there right now. From day 32 to day 35, Grace the Gorgon and I traveled to the Badlands to help Terry the Troll. When we got there, Terry's shack was a mess. And I don't mean he forgot to pick up his dirty socks. I mean the whole thing had been knocked down. And Terry was nowhere to be seen. Instead, there was just a creepy ghost hovering out front. You're too late, Zozo. Your friend has already left this life behind. Pity he died this way and not in the jaws of the mighty Dread Beast. He was not as lucky as you will be. What do you mean? That can't be true! Ah, uh, but it is. One way or another, you will join us. I have heard that the Dread Beast is craving eel pie, and his hunger will soon be sated. No, it won't! You may have taken my friend, but I'll never let you beat me! I shot a wither skull at the ghost and vaporized it! It felt good, but I was still heartbroken about Terry! We can't let Terry's death be in vain, Zozo! I may only be a little fire eel, but as long as I have fire breath in my body, I won't let the Dread Beast do this to anyone ever again! From day 36 to day 39, I returned to the Basalt Barrera. Now that I got rid of the Dread Knight, this place is pretty peaceful. I'd love to kick back and relax out here. Well, not kick. I don't have feet, but you get the idea. I was just about to try and squeeze in a little relaxation between quests when another ogre approached me. Oi, your name's Zozo, isn't it? I've got a right awful bloke in me house. He just won't leave. I tried to chase him out, and he said he'd burn me to a crisp he did. Wow, people from the nether sure have a funny way of talking. But I get what you mean, friend. Show me the way, and I'll do my best to help. He took me to his house, where, sure enough, a great big fire ogre was getting ready to burn the place down. Luckily, I threw a wither skull and stopped him before he could torch the nether ogre's house. Here you go, still just as not burned down as it was before. Well, Bob's your uncle. Say, you're that bloke what's looking to get rid of the dread beast. I am. Well, he's only out there in the swamplands he is. That's good to know. I just won't go there until I'm strong enough to fight and win. From day 40 to day 43, I traveled back home to my base. When I got there, I was surprised to find Sid the Cyclops waiting for me. Hey there, Zozo! While you were out, I built some additional rooms. Oh, that's amazing! I need a room for my friend here. But what made you think of that? Well, I was hoping we could invite more guests to come stay. I know a few guys. It turns out, that very guy was Patrick the Panda, who I'd already met. The more the merrier. Here's your new room, Patrick. Holy, it's perfect, Zozo. Say, could you do me one more favor? Could you go to the bayou and get my favorite book? I left it out there, and I've got a hankering for reading. Sure, I'll head over there now. From day 44 to day 49, I traveled to the bayou to look for Patrick the Panda's favorite book. I probably should have asked him what it looked like, or what it was called. Oh well, I'm here now. But I wasn't the only one here. The terrifying dread beast popped out right in front of me. Indeed you are, Zozo. Tasty eel, it's almost my supper time. Once it is, I will feast. And the prophecy foretells that once I eat a fire eel, I will reach my ultimate power and devour all that I see. I'll never let you eat me, especially not after you said all that scary stuff. When the time comes, you will not be able to escape. With that, he disappeared, but I didn't get a chance to wonder where he went. In his place, he left behind a huge, mean-looking blue manticore. Look upon your future, Zozo. If I could not defeat the Dread Beast, then surely a tiny, insignificant fire eel will not be able to. You will be devoured like the rest. Why still work for him after what he did to you? 
Fool, there is no choice. Once the Dread Beast has eaten you, there is no freedom. That's terrible. I could tell he was the toughest opponent I'd faced so far. But if I wanted to save myself and free the blue manticore from the Dread Beast grip, I was going to have to win. From day 50 to day 53, I continued my fight against the blue manticore. He was even stronger than he looked. I was pretty worried that I might not make it out of this one. Just accept your fate. Never. No one deserves that. I used all of the strength I had and fought as hard as I could. And with the help of my trusty Wither Skull, I finally managed to defeat him. But by the time I did, the Dread Beast was long gone. Oh, I was hoping to find out where exactly his base is. I know it's in a swamp, but where? Just then, I noticed something on the ground. The Manticore must have dropped it. I took a closer look, and it was a map with Dread Beast Clubhouse written on it. This must be where his base is. Once I'm strong enough, I'm going straight there. From day 54 to day 57, I continued my search for Patrick the Panda's book. Finally, I came across a book lying on the ground. I went over to pick it up, but a hell ostrich leapt at me and started attacking. Hey, that's my friend's book. I need it back. The hell ostrich didn't say anything. It just kept attacking me. Okay, we don't have to chat about it, but you just have to let me take the book. With a few well-timed attacks, I was able to defeat the hell ostrich and grab the book. Sure enough, it said Panda's book on it. It also dropped something else. Netherite ingots. Maybe I can use these later. I hurried back to my base to find Patrick the Panda. Patrick, I got your book. Thank you, Zozo. I reckon I'll never know how to repay you. You can pay me back with your friendship and by enjoying that book. I also happen to have heard tell of a magic apple, one that gives anyone who eats it a massive boost of strength. Might be just what you need. I'll keep an eye out for a magic apple then. From day 58 to day 62, I took a look around my base. This place is pretty great, but it could be even better. I wandered over to the chicken farm and had an idea. That's it, I'll expand this area so we can have even more chickens. With all of these new people staying at the base, we'll need lots of eggs. After that, I headed back into the mining cave to look for anything I could use to upgrade my gear. It took a long time, but I managed to find some diamonds. I took them back to my base and used them to craft a set of diamond armor, a diamond pickaxe, and a diamond sword. Wait until the Dread Beast gets a look at this. Good luck eating all these diamonds. Grace the Gorgon then approached with some more good news. Zozo, come and see what I've done. I've added to the base. This is the party room, where we can all celebrate when you've bested the beast. I know you can do it. Thanks for believing in me, Grace. From day 63 to day 66, I was hanging out at my base, practicing my dance moves in the party room when Sid the Cyclops came to see me. Zozo, I heard that there might be some helpful materials in Butch Forest. Where'd you hear that? Got a tip from my materials guy. It's good enough for your guy, it's good enough for me. I traveled to the birch forest and got to work looking for anything useful. As I searched, I spotted a maned wolf stalking her way toward me. Please don't attack me, I'm busy. I wasn't gonna attack you. I was gonna say hi and ask you for a favor if that's okay. I'm Mallory. Nice to meet you, I'm Zozo. What kind of favor? My baby was kidnapped by a silver skeleton. Please help me get it back. Of course, where did you last see him? Let's go. From day 67 to day 70, I followed the maned wolf to another part of the birch forest. There, I could see a silver skeleton. Where are you hiding the baby maned wolf? I'll never tell. She's definitely not locked in that building over there. Huh, I tricked you. Time to fight. I didn't give the silver skeleton any more time. I shot a wither skull at the skeleton. He attacked me in return, but my armor kept me from taking too much damage. Then it was time to test out my new diamond sword. I was able to defeat the silver skeleton with only two swipes. Then I opened the door to the nearby totally not suspicious building, and there was the baby wolf. Thank you so much. I'll change her name to Zozo after you. That's really nice, but please don't do that. A thanks is enough. From day 71 to day 74, I decided to follow the map to the cold swamplands and try to sneak a look at that Dread Beast hideout. While I was following the map's path, I started thinking about how much had already happened. I've had some amazing adventures so far. To find even more of my awesome antics, make sure to search Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. That's my name. Finally, I reached the cold swamplands. Jeez, they call it cold for a reason. This is definitely no place for a fire eel. 
Then, in swooped the Dread Beast! You will have plenty of time to get used to it, after I've had my meal and your spirit is trapped here forever! The Dread Beast found me before I found him! Time to see if I'm ready to fight this guy! I shot a Wither Skull at him, but he tanked it with complete ease! I'll try the sword! I attacked with my sword, but he barely seemed to feel it! Like a mere paper cut. Uh-oh, he hit me back, and my new armor protected me from getting completely knocked down, but I knew I wouldn't last too much longer! I'm not ready to take him on! From day 75 to day 78, I ran all the way back to my base! I wish I could fight him now, but if I do that before I get stronger, I'll lose for sure! I decided to lie down in my room for a while! I want to be a hero, but I'm starting to think that, sadly, I'm only an eel. Grace the Gorgon knocked on my door, interrupting my sad thoughts. Hey Zozo, I know you're disappointed, but I wanted to show you an addition I've made to our home here. Come and look! I followed her all the way to a new watchtower. Oh, this is pretty cool. Thank you, Grace. I feel better. While well, Grace and I were admiring the watchtower and all the watching we'd be able to do up there, Patrick joined me. Take a look at what I found. He handed me a magic apple. Hey, this is like the one you told me about. Not just like it, it's the same one. Try it. I ate the apple and I felt myself growing bigger and more powerful. My hearts increased to 60 and I gained a new attack. I could shoot a fireball. I'll show that dread beast what being a fire eel is all about. From day 79 to day 84, I traveled back to the cold swamplands. This time, if the dread beast ambushes me again, I'll be ready. I didn't spot him anywhere, but I was able to test out my new strength and my fireball on an undead scorpion that tried to sting me. Nice try, but I'm not a little fire eel that people can pick on anymore. I'm a big, strong eel that plays by my own rules. That awesome act of firepower attracted the attention of a friendly polar bear. You sure are. I know what that's like. Well, not the being an eel pot. As you can see, I'm a polar bear. Hi. I decided to sit with the polar bear for a little while, and when I finally got up to go, he stopped me for a second. Thanks for the company. Hey, is that netherite? Attach it to your sword, like this. Then he crafted a netherite sword for me. Thank you, this is great! From day 85 to day 89, I said goodbye to the nice polar bear and took my new netherite sword back to my base. When I got there, I saw that someone had destroyed my new watchtower. Hey, Grace worked really hard on that. I looked around for the culprit, and I saw a ghost floating away into the Badlands. Oh, no you don't. I chased after the ghost as fast as I could. As I did, a painted kitty stopped me. Excuse me? Could you point the way to the birch forest? I'm terribly lost. I quickly pointed her in the right direction, then kept running after the ghost. Looks like he's running toward the cold swamplands. From day 90 to day 94, I finally managed to catch up with the ghost. He ran into the Dread Beast's hideout. I stopped just outside. I'm not ready to go in there yet, but I can wait out here and see what happens. The ghost came back out of the hideout like he was looking for me. I got a better look at him and saw that he wasn't just a ghost. He was a huge, tough-looking Dread Ghoul. My, my, my. Look who took the bait. It's the main course for the coming feast. I'm so sick of you all saying stuff like that. Then try and stop me, if you dare. I shot a fireball at the Dread Ghoul, and it barely even phased him. Uh-oh, he's the toughest minion I've fought yet. From day 95 to day 97, I continued my battle against the Dread Ghoul. I really need to do my best if I'm going to win this one. With the help of my new netherite sword, I was finally able to knock the Dread Ghoul down for good. His helmet fell to the floor, and I grabbed it. It was netherite. This goes great with my sword. Hey, what's this? I spotted a note on the ground. It says the Dread Beast is getting worried about me. He thinks I might be able to destroy him before he can eat me and fulfill the prophecy. This is great news. It means I'm definitely on the right track. I can't back down. I've got to get everything I possibly need before I enter the final battle. On day 98, I returned to my base. Grace the Gorgon and the rest were waiting for me. I'm really starting to think I can do this. I wasn't so sure before, but now I know everything will work out. It will. And look, I fixed the watchtower. The Dread Beast and his ilk can't keep us down. Yeah! Next, I spoke to Patrick the Panda. Zozo, before you head on out of here to fight that big boss, take this. It's a potion of strength. It'll power you up good. 
Thank you, this is just what I need. And finally, Sid the Cyclops. I don't have any potions or any repairs done, just this. I may only have one eye, but I can see a bright future ahead of you, and the rest of us too, because you're gonna do it, kid. Thank you. Well, no more waiting around. I've got to go see a dread beast about a battle. On day 99, I traveled back to the cold swamplands and the dread beast hideout. When I got there, I started to get pretty worried because the whole place was crawling with ghosts. Well, they were floating, but they were everywhere. But the maned wolf from before came bounding up to me. I can handle these ghosts. You get inside while I keep them busy. While the maned wolf took care of the ghost, I finally entered the Dread Beast Clubhouse. On day 100, I entered the Dread Beast base and found him waiting there for me. Yes, I knew you'd be here soon. My stomach has been growling. Time to feast. Why do you have to eat all these innocent victims? Why can't you just have some pie or a sandwich like everybody else? Because no sandwich in this world tastes sweeter than absolute power. What about pie? Pie's pretty sweet. Enough talk. I'm much too hungry and I'm craving fire eel. He lunged at me and attacked, but I was ready. I dodged him and shot back a fireball in return. It hit him, but he kept going. He rushed at me again and this time he knocked me back. But I wasn't done yet. I used my netherite sword to get the upper hand. Zozo, imagine it. If you join my ghostly army, then you will share in my infinite power. The world will be ours. No thanks. I'm not taking that deal. I drank the strength potion and finally got the better of him. And with one more swipe of my sword, I destroyed the mighty, terrible dread beast. I did it! I saved the day! I'll say it, this eel is on fire!